Hello, I'm Elspeth Piggott and I'm a soprano. I sang with the Oxford Bach soloists back in 2018 when Tom first set up the choral scholarships to train young singers in how to sing solo Bach with Baroque Orchestra. Um, since then I've been singing um, a lot of Baroque music with the uh, Brighton Early Music Festival um, and with Eva Gelini as well as lots of other choirs in the choral scene. Um, and I'm going to be showing you clips from a recent performance I did of BWV 51, Yauxet Gott in Alan London, and telling you about the project I did this with, the Hampstead Collective. The Hampstead Collective is a new project that has grown out of the choir and organists at Hampstead Parish Church, where we all perform services on a Sunday. Um, and during lockdown, when we couldn't meet and we couldn't sing together, we actually carried on having a drink on a Sunday every week via Zoom. Um, and it was during one of these sessions that Jess Dandy, our contralto, um, played a what if game. And she asked us what would we all, what would be at the top of our lists if we were to sing again, if we, want, if we were to perform, put on a concert series with no restrictions, what would we want to do? And we all had a Bach cantata that we wanted that was at the top of our lists. So when Jess asked me, um, this was the first thing I picked, the, the yaks that got in Alan London. <laughs> the piece since I was 18 years old when I first started learning it the first movement um, when I kept, first came across it it just it's just meant for agility um, and when I started singing it I just thought yes this is this is what my voice was made for so it was just so much fun from the beginning and the first movement is so full of joy it was the it was my very first thing I sang um, to an audience in six months for the concert last week and yeah I just couldn't think of anything better to start making music again than this I had come back to Bach during that period of isolation I think it was the second movement of this work, or the second aria rather, the third movement, the aria Höchste, Höchste Macher Deiner Güte, Ferne Alle Morgen Neu. Um, and it was because this movement really spoke to me during that time. The, the English translation is um, highest, renew your goodness every morning from now on. It says renew, make new every morning 
your goodness. And yet the music itself is really repetitive. Um, especially the cello bass line. Um, you'll hear it in a minute, but it goes... And it just continues on like this. And it, it doesn't stop for the whole aria. Having lost all of my work and not being able to have other people in my life. Everything, at least for the first month before I, I found my feet again and, and started really teaching online. Um, and found my refound my purpose for the first month. Um, I don't know. I feel like probably a lot of people felt this at the time, but I felt very trapped. I felt um, felt like time just stood still and continued with no real purpose, with no real distinction. And it, all time just sort of melted into each other. And that's how I feel this piece represents time. Cantata was written in 1730 for the 17th Sunday after Trinity and Bach had a star trumpet player in his band called Gottfried Weicker who this part was presumably written for. In our concert the trumpet player is the brilliant Simon Munday um, but we don't actually know who the vocal line was originally written for. I was uh, surprised to remember that women weren't allowed to sing in the church in Bach's time. Surprised because it just, it seemed so well suited for a coloratura soprano um, that I almost think, you know, did Bach hear them at the opera and write it with a woman's voice in mind? Um, but it doesn't seem very well suited to a boy chorister in any case. Uh, the part is just so intricate, so detailed, so complicated. Um, it goes up to a top C, which is out of the range of most boys, and they would have had to compete with the trumpet, which would have been a challenge. Um, so perhaps the most likely candidate was um, the castrati Giovanni Bindi, who performed nearby to Leipzig in the Dresden Opera House. Women have been banned from singing in the church for a thousand, over a thousand years. The first official edict we have is from the 9th century AD Pope Leo IV, who said it officially that women were banned from singing in church, but it was certainly before then that they were prohibited. Um, and it isn't until the 1930s and 40s, the 20th century, that we see women singing in church for the first time in a thousand years. Um, and in the Catholic Church, it's 1958 that Pope Pius XII um, officially allows girl choristers into Catholic services. And in the leadership roles, women in the church is even later. I was, I got interested in all of this um, through doing research for this concert. So I was talking to Ayla Lepine, who until recently was the curate at Hampstead Parish Church. Um, and she has now become the chaplain at King's College, Cambridge. 
about Hampstead's history with women in the church. And she was telling me how Hampstead um, was a real centre for um, early campaigners for women in the priesthood. Um, they used to meet in the vicarage in the 1980s and a book came out of it called uh, Dispossessed Daughters of Eve, which is the most fantastic title. Um, the first woman bishop of London was Bishop Sarah Mullally, and she was installed in 2018. And I just want to read a little bit of her um, sermon from St Paul's, her very first sermon. 105 years ago this week, suffragettes placed a bomb under the seat which I have just been enthroned. Vergers were just as eagle-eyed then as they are now, and the bomb didn't go off. Let me reassure you, I do not come carrying bombs, or perhaps not little, literal ones anyway. But I am aware that as the first woman bishop of London, I am necessarily subversive, and it is a necessity I intend to embrace. So doing this performance really reminded me of how subversive it is just to be me, just to be a woman in the church. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified of the next Back to Bark episode. And if you click the link in the description below, you can donate. All the proceeds go directly to the musicians, um, which is really making a material difference to us in these hard times. You can head over to the Hampstead Collective website to get tickets for our Monday night concerts and if you want to see my performance of Yauxit Gott and Alan Landon in full you can find that on the Hampstead Collective YouTube channel. Thank you.